we've spent a lot of time talking about diagnosis and risk factors as well. I think really trying to get into the, an overview of like, how is ovarian cancer treated and, and your approach? Yeah, so that's a great question. And I think that often when we talk about ovarian cancer, we always kind of go back to talking about epithelial ovarian cancer because that's the most common type that we see. And in general, epithelial ovarian cancers and honestly most ovarian cancers do require some form of surgery because our surgery is gonna go in and it's going to take that cancer out and it's gonna give us our diagnosis. But often we also use chemotherapy. Right? And for when we talk about those advanced staged ovarian cancers, sometimes we start with chemotherapy. And that is where that biopsy may come into play, right? If we are worried that surgery may not be the right thing for that patient, then we may start with chemotherapy. And that chemotherapy can help to shrink the tumor so that surgery may be possible or safer for the patient, depending on their age, depending on what other medical problems they may have, um, or it can depend on where the cancer is. So if we can't take that cancer out safely from surgery, we may start with chemotherapy so that surgery can be something where we go in and any cancers that's left, we can remove. We often have additional types of treatment outside of classic chemotherapy that we may use to help. Sometimes when you finish your first surgery and your first rounds of chemo, we put people on what's called maintenance therapy. And the goal of that therapy is to try and keep that cancer from coming back. And so one thing that people may have heard of, just as an example, are the HARP inhibitors. They're a new class of drug that we've used and we can talk about a little bit more, um, but it, the goal of that therapy is to, again, keep the cancer from coming back. Very rarely do we use radiation therapy, which is different from chemo. Chemo is often a type of treatment that you get through an IV, sometimes through a pill form. Radiation, I described to patients, it's similar to when you would get an x-ray, right? You lay on a table and they give you radiation just at a much higher dose than you would get from an x-ray. And that helps to kill those cancer cells in a very local fashion, right? If it's one little spot, we can often use radiation therapy for that. We are constantly looking for new and better ways to treat ovarian cancer. And so your doctor may talk to you about clinical trials. And clinical trials frequently combine the chemotherapies that we know have worked with new drugs that are trying to target the, the bad things that the cancers are doing to your cells so that we can kill the cancer cells more specifically. Another important part of our treatment and that I talk to my patients about very early on is what we call palliative care. And sometimes people associate this with hospice care, and there's an important distinction between those two. Palliative care is really meant as a supportive part of the care that we give to our cancer patients because we know that both cancer and this, the treatments that we give can be really hard and they can cause lots of horrible symptoms like nausea and vomiting or constipation or diarrhea. And so our palliative care colleagues are really there to help us manage those things and to make the, the treatment for your cancer that much easier. When we talk about choosing the type of treatment, it really depends on the type of cancer, right? We talked about the epithelial, but also the more rare subtypes, those germ cells or stromal tumors, also the stage of the cancer, and may also um, take into account your age and what you can do today. today. How strong are you? What other medical problems do you have? It's what we call your overall health. And one of the really important things that we take into consideration are the people who treat these cancers all the time. So having you see a specialist can be very, very important in coordinating the best plan of care for your cancer, taking into consideration all of these factors so that you're getting the best care possible. 